Hi, Captain Justin DeLeon here from the University of Iowa, APMS here at Iowa, and also the MS3 instructor. Uh, today, what we're going to talk about is linear danger areas and open danger areas, uh, also known as LDAs and ODAs. We're going to talk about specific ways to cross them or bypass them, uh, according to Army doctrine. So first of all, we have ATP, as references, we have ATP 3-21.8, Infantry Platoon and Squad. And then we also have the Ranger Handbook, TC3-21.76. Uh, and those are what we're going to be using today. So first of all, what is an LDA? So linear danger area is something that is linear or extends over a length of distance. All right? And it's anything that the platoon leader decides that gives the enemy a potential uh, or an advantage to observe from the elements or fire upon from the elements. And if we look at it, a road or a trail or like a fire break, something that has length and distance that you can see down it is usually what designates a linear danger area. So road's a great example where looking this way, if I'm looking across the road this way, I can see what, you know, five to ten meters, however long the road is. But if I have someone on this road looking down this direction, they can see quite a long ways. Um, you know, obviously they can see a couple hundred meters, but let's say this is, we're on some type of elevated terrain here, looking that way, I might be able to see up to a mile. Um, so it's a very, very dangerous thing to cross LDAs. Uh, we don't want to cross LDAs whenever possible. If possible, we want to bypass, but sometimes, uh, you know, with the mission parameters and maybe the timeline parameters, we have to cross LDAs. And that's the way it goes. So what we got to do, though, is we got to make sure that we do this as safely and securely as possible to limit our risk and to mitigate that risk as we cross. And we're open to observation, also open to some type of machine gun fire, anything that's going to infiltrate fire down that, um, that danger area. So the doctrinal way, there's one doctrinal way uh, to cross an LDA, according to the Ranger Handbook. All right, and that's called, let's go through that. So what it looks like is we come up, here we are in our platoon column, uh, we have our lead squad, our center squad, our rear squad. We also have our platoon leader headqu headquarters element with a machine gun team. We also have a platoon sergeant in, in uh, his headquarters element with his machine gun team in the center there. So as we travel along, we identify that we are at LDA. Point man, alpha team leader here from the security squad, calls a short halt. Calls a halt, his squad leader moves up, and also the platoon leader should move up. And they're going to identify that, yes, they are in LDA. What we try not to do is we don't want our alpha team leader just to identify the LDA and then immediately send back the signal and get things in motion. That can be efficient, however, it's much more valuable and much more efficient if the PL goes up and does it himself and identifies it. Because sometimes the PL might decide, hey, I don't want to cross at this point. I want to cross 100 meters down or whatever. So what we don't want to do is set the crossing in motion without the PL identifying and validating that, yes, this is the LDA, one, and two, this is where I want to cross it. So once the PL moves forward and confirms that, yes, this is the LDA, and that's where we want to cross it, he's going to send back that signal. And then the motions for crossing are going to begin. So first of all, the main thing that we need that's going to happen is this rear squad is responsible for establishing near side security on the road. Again, near side is the side close to us. Far side will be the side furthest away from us. So that rear squad is responsible and typically it just looks like something like their Bravo team going up. So we've got at least two soldiers from the rear moving up and pulling near side security to the left and we have two other soldiers from the rear squad moving up and pulling rear side security to the right. Once security is in place, now we can at least cross the road with some risk mitigated. That if we take fire along this route, we have people that can fire back and hopefully suppress any enemy fires coming, our direct fires. Now, what we want to do is, the reason why this is probably the best method is because it's a lot more secure. And the way we ensure that it is more secure is this forward team, the point team, is going to now move across the LDA. There's different ways they can do it. Um, you can go in buddy team rushes where two men run across, the other two men then run across, or you can move in that tight wedge. So either way, anyways, let's say they move in this tight wedge and they get across. So this alpha team has now moved across the LDA. 
the remainder of the platoon stays in their platoon column and really they're establishing security in a cigar shaped like fashion. So once this team goes across, they're going to recon the far side of the LDA. And they're going to be reconning for two main things. One, they're reconning to obviously identify that there's no enemy in the area. A great way to do that and a great way to confirm is they're going to move out a safe distance from the road and conduct a seals halt. So they're going to move out, conduct a seals halt, stop, look, listen, smell, make sure there's no enemy in the area, make sure there are no civilians in the area, make sure there's nothing that can compromise their mission. And once that seals halt is complete, they're going to continue to conduct their reconnaissance. And the second thing that they got to decide and, and figure out is that, hey, is there enough space for this platoon column to fit on the other side of the LDA? What we don't want, what we don't want is to start crossing, and all of a sudden we find out 100 meters later we run into a large open danger area or we run into a town or run into some buildings, whatever it may be, we run into something that's not going to allow the entire platoon to fit. So they got to go out, recon, and move out and identify, yep, the platoon can fit here. So once they've done that, once they've done their seals halt and confirmed there's no enemy in the area, and they confirm that the whole platoon can move across the LDA and occupy safely, that Alpha Team leader is going to move back and give the signal here that, hey, yes, we're good to cross. All right, Ranger Handbook actually says it can be a thumbs up. All right, but it has to be some type of method where they can visually tell each other, Yep, we're good to cross, the platoon can fit. All right, at night, maybe it looks like an IR chem light or an actual chem light, whatever you want to use. Um, but we gotta get that signal back. So once that alpha team leader signals back to this squad leader right here, the security squad leader says, yep, we're good to cross, squad leader uh, confirms with the PL, and then we begin to cross at this time. So the squad leader then moves across with his Bravo team, They get across, and now they begin moving. They continue to slowly move, all right? Again, their movement now is probably at a crawl because they gotta make sure they give space and time for these guys, the rest of the platoon, to get across the LDA. But they continue to move. The PL and his headquarters element gets across, and then after that, team by team by team, just it continues to get across the LDA, all right? These guys have all moved across, let's say. The final team, you guys are gone, because they're on the edge just pulling security. The final team moves across and pulls far side security so that these guys can move in and they can all back pick up, pick back up and go across. Alright? We gotta make sure we get those last man. And remember. The guy that's probably watching to make sure we get these last two men on the near side security across the LDA while these guys pull far side security is that platoon sergeant. He's ensuring that. All right, so that is the doctrinal way to cross the LDA. We get that near side security, we conduct that recon to ensure there's no enemy in the area and to ensure that the whole platoon can fit and then the whole platoon begins to move across either by buddy team or by team. Okay. That is the doctrinal way to cross an LDA. And that is the recommended way, especially if you're moving across some type of hard, hard ball surface or some type of major LDA. Now, sometimes you might come up to something like a trail, something that, yes, it is an LDA, but you're not as concerned about it. And so there are some other ways that we have come up with to cross LDAs uh, that are common. Now, again, I'm going to point out that these are more SOP driven and they are not technically doctrinal, but they do work. All right, so one is scrolling the road, which I, which is a lot of you are probably cringing by me saying that, but that is a method, all right? Um, the method is, is that we basically are in a file. So I'm not gonna draw out the entire platoon, but basically we have a list of, a line of soldiers in file. Obviously they're at the appropriate spacing, but they're gonna just move and bump themselves as they go, go along here. So first guy's gonna come up and pull the near side security to the left. He's going to go away. Second one is going to pass him up, go to the far side, and pull security to the right. And now we technically have security looking to the left and to the right. And then now, as we do this, we're going to bump. What I mean by that is this guy's going to physically move down 
and bump him. He's going to take his position. This one that was on the near side security, he is now going to move to far side security and take that and bump this first guy and start moving. And now we just keep bumping. They bump and keep moving. And now we just start moving across the LDA. All right. Again, this is a lot less secure. One, our security is probably postured closer together, so we have limited observation down the road. Two, we're bumping pretty quickly. It's a quicker way to get across the road. So these guys that are pulling security don't have a lot of time to actually look down that LDA and gather their, you know, gather their senses and gather their targets and uh, gather some reference points uh, because they're continually bumping. And then lastly, we don't, on this, we're not connecting a recon on the far side of the LDA. So we don't know for sure that there's no enemy over there. We also don't know for sure that the platoon will fit. Um, so again, it is an expedited version and we give up some security uh, with this, but it is potentially very quick. Um, and it's also very, very quick if you do this at the squad level. All right, so last way that I'm gonna teach, there's obviously probably several more ways to do this, uh, but a way that we do also teaches a potential method. Um, this is a method that I, I personally learned at major school. Um, it, I'm calling it the modified scroll. So the modified scroll. So again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw out, uh, bear with me for one second, we're gonna draw out our uh, platoon here. Alright, so we got our platoon column, we got our lead squad, our center squad, our rear squad, PL, PSG, and machine gun teams. Okay, what this looks like is similar, there is bumping involved as well, but it's less, there's less of it. So what it looks like is everyone that's pulling security on the road is going to be an automatic rifleman, and that's who's going to stay there. So it's basically, the, the way I like to think of it is as if I'm in a road march, and I have my road march, uh, my road guards, on the sides of the road, you know, telling uh, cars to halt or whatever. It's a similar, similar mentality, but except it's my automatic rifleman. So, what I do is same, the same thing. I, I identify as an LDA, I uh, have the squad leader move up, I have the PM move up, they confirm, and they say, yeah, we're gonna do an LDA crossing, but we're gonna do a modified scroll. And so what it looks like is, when we call it, we have our automatic rifleman move forward. So here's this AR, let's, let's, let's mark all our ARs. Again, our automatic riflemen are our 249 saw gunners. Okay, so we have these two automatic riflemen start pulling security down the road. And then while these automatic riflemen from the lead squad are looking down the road on either side, this squad, whether it's in buddy teams or it's in modified wedge, they're crossing the road. So now, as this squad gets across the road, it just continues to move. And once that squad is through, the next squad's automatic riflemen move up and bump these guys off. Oops. So then these automatic riflemen pick up and cross and get back in formation. And now the second squad's automatic riflemen are pulling for it as it crosses. And then again, at the end, the third ARs do the same thing, and the whole platoon continues to move forward. The automatic riflemen just join in formation. So I hope that wasn't too confusing to understand, but basically those automatic riflemen are the ones pulling security for their squad and the, the squad that's after them, they're, they're on that rifle and bump them as we continue to move. All right. Again, this is a little bit more secure because I like the security being further out in the squad of the road. The element is still in a platoon column, which I think is a better formation to be in rather than a large file. So I like this better than just regular scroll. Um, however, we are, again, not having the greatest security. And the main reason for that is that we're not doing that recon of the far side of the LDA. So we're not looking, one, to see if there's any enemy on the other side, and two, we're not confirming that the platoon can fit on the other side. However, the modified scroll 
is a good technique that can apply speed uh, to your move if you need it and if you're pretty certain that um, there aren't any over there and that the platoon's going to fit. You know? But again, you're taking that risk. It is a risk, but sometimes it pays off and sometimes it doesn't. So as the leader, as the platoon leader, you have to be the one to make that decision what method is best. If you're in doubt and you have time, always go with the deliberate action. Uh, it's going to pay off in the long run. Okay, lastly what I want to talk about is I want to talk about open danger areas. What that looks like. So an open danger area is similar to linear, but typically we have just a square. So let's say all around here, this is my terrible way of drawing vegetation. But basically, our platoon Our platoon is moving towards this open danger area, and they run into it right here. All right. There's two ways to do this. All right. But basically, the easiest method to get around this is well. Obviously, the side line. Obviously, we do not want to cross the open danger area. Why? We're susceptible to ambush on the other side, and we're extremely susceptible to indirect fires. Basically, someone can easily observe us in an open field. Uh, some sort, and they can lay down fire on top of us, whether it's direct or indirect fire. So we don't want to go there. So we won't. We, we know that we want to bypass this, all right? And so basically, we're trying to find the best way to bypass it. The easiest way and the most, the best way to confirm, no question, that you're going to stay on azimuth, because we want to stay on azimuth moving like this, is to move around it in a special technique, all right? It's called the 90 degree. I call it the 90 degree rule, um, but. I basically, what I'll do is, let's say I'm moving, let's take make this easy, I'm moving due north. So I'm moving originally at 360 degrees, due north, okay? I want to stay on that. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to go to the edge of this wood line, not the exact edge, but basically the edge of the wood line, and I'm going to take a 90 degree turn and start moving this way, to the right or to the left. I can go either way. For, for this example, we'll move right. So, I'm going to stop. I'm going to go 90 degrees, and I'm going to keep my pace. And let's say it took me 100 meters to move this direction. So I know now that I have to go back 100 meters when I get to the far side. So I got to here. Here's my platoon again. And now I'm going to turn back 360 degrees, and I'm going to walk until I'm around, until I'm past that open danger area. So once I get past that open danger area, I now know I need to turn to the left exactly 90 degrees. So I'm gonna go at 270 degrees and walk left for 100 meters. Once I get there, I know I'm gonna be at exactly the same point I was on the near side that I am now on the far side. And then from there, I can now continue my move north at 360 degrees. And it's as if I never even was off at the open danger area. But this way is a great way because it confirms no question that I am going to be on the exact same spot, the exact same azimuth that I was prior. The other way is what we call contouring uh, the open danger area. And really what it means is I move up to the edge of this wood line all right, I can see, let's say this is 100 meters distance. I shoot my azimuth with my compass, and I can see from the other side exactly, I pick out a tree. Let's say there's a large tree over here. Terrible representation of a tree. Whatever. Large tree over there, and I shoot my azimuth to it. And I say, hey, okay, all I got to do is move around this open danger area, get to that tree, and then I know I'll be right on azimuth again. And so basically it's a way that, hey, if it's not that big of an open danger area and I can fix it from the far side, I can literally just move up and contour around it, get to that point, and then continue moving. All right. So this way, on the right, mathematically confirms there's no question that I'm going. And this way on the left is a little bit more feel, but it works if it's not that long of an open danger area and I can see to the far side. So either way works great. And again, um, these are both these both techniques are out of the Ranger Handbook and are both absolutely uh, doctrinal. Okay, so just a review. Today we talked about linear danger areas and open danger areas. 
I talked about the doctrinal way to cross the linear danger area, which is uh, the deliberate way. And I also talked about two additional ways that we've come up with, a uh, scroll in the road and a modified scroll. Again, those are not actually doctrinal, but they can work and they can add speed uh, to your travels if necessary, especially if you're crossing you know, eight to 10 linear, linear danger areas in a patrol. That will take a long time if you have to do the deliberate way every single time. And then secondly, we talked about open danger areas, and we talked about the two ways, using the 90 degree rule uh, to get around it, mathematically, um, making sure that mathematically you're going to go in the same azimuth around uh, to the far side, and we talked about contouring, where you're picking something out on the far side and just moving a circle around, and we kick and uh, continue to move on azimuth. Again, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I really appreciate it. I hope today was useful to you. Uh, Rangers lead the way.